Hello, and welcome to this video on Pulsar Synthesis with Plume, a new Yororak micro sound oscillator from Hieroglyphic. Here's what's to come. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Hieroglyphic. Now, Pulsar Synthesis is certainly going to be new to a lot of people as it's a much rarer used synthesis type compared to, say, subtractive, additive, or even granular synthesis. Hieroglyphic say that Plume presents an approach to sound and rhythm that is somewhere between an oscillator, granulator, and clock generator. I was interested where these ideas came from, so I asked Daniel from Hieroglyphic to share his origins and inspirations for Plume. And here's what he had to say. Plume's implementation of Pulsar Synthesis is based directly on the Curtis Rhodes article Sound Composition with Pulsars, where he describes a technique that uses an impulse generator to trigger arbitrary waveforms. The impulse generator controls Plume's fundamental frequency, where the wave shape frequency, called formant, modifies timbre, crossfading, wave folding, and amplitude modulation can then be applied to each wave shape. Lastly, the masking stage allows for advanced stereo location and impulse train modification. Pulsar synthesis is closely related to Rhodes' popularization of another technique, granular synthesis, but the primary difference is that pulsar synthesis uses synthesized waveforms instead of sampled sounds. And I'll add here that for those into the science of sound, Curtis Rhodes' article is well worth a read and has graphics that help visualise the nature of generating and manipulating these wave shapes. That article is linked below. I'll first run you down the features of Plume, and then we'll hear a range of tones with a simple drone playing, and then we'll get into moving into an in-depth look at pulsar synthesis and further examples. Pitch is controlled with the coarse and fine tunes, as well as the volt per octave input, and you can hard sync the oscillator core with the sync input. Formant shifts the wave cycle within a given pulse, and that can be decoupled from the pitch control. Cluster controls the amount of single cycle waves within a given pulse. Shape is then variably morphing through seven different wave shapes, and the fold adds a West Coast style wave folder to the pulsar wave shape. The masking section introduces intermittence in the pulse train by masking individual pulses. This can be done with a ratio of pulses on the left and right outputs in burst mode, or changing to stochastic mode on that mask button, you can use a probability in a pan to distribute these pulses across the left and right outputs. The window controls the overall volume curve of the pulse, whether that's a single cycle wave shape, something formant shifted or multiple cluster cycles, you can have these fade up and down across varying wave shapes. All of these controls work as offsets and have CV inputs to add to them. And finally, I'll add that there's a range switch to move between audio and LFO ranges, and that the screen is a really nice visual aid and it's not something that's menu driven or even needs paying attention to. It shows you what wave shape you're using for the window and what wave shape and the effect of the other controls has on these pulses. That's a lot of talking, so let's just hear a heavily modulated drone flying through a range of sounds. So with our ears blasted from that intense drone sound, and it can do much cleaner sounds too, let's get into the patches. The first being a sub audio LFO example, and that's the best way for us all to learn about pulsar synthesis and what these controls and features are doing. The patches, though, are all on screen. Skip around as you like, and let's dive in. So now we've heard a drone to get a feel for how Plume sounds. I actually think the simplest way to understand this pulsar synthesis is to use it as an LFO. The left output here, blue cables, blue trace on data, modulates the low pass filter on the left side, and the yellow trace, yellow cables, is modulating the right hand side of my filter. Now with all the faders down and I'm in the burst mode for the masking, we have a sine wave shape by default, and with no burst, no rest here, we 
just get a consistent sine wave out of the left output. Now as I add a rest, you'll see on the screen it go from 1 to 0 to 1 to 1. This is one pulsar and then one rest, where the left is out of the main one if you like, and the rest is on the right. So that splits these pulsarettes or pulses, sine waves in this case, onto each side. In this mode we can add more rests. So that's now one on the left, two on the right. You can see that on the scope. You could have more on the left and just one on the right and so on. If we change that masking mode to stochastic, with probability all the way down, this just plays consistently. It's like a 100% probability these will play. And we have a panner that's visualized on screen and you can see in here how that affects my stereo filter patch. Now we'll stick with the burst mode here and go to a one-to-one, -one, just moving across each side. As we move the form and control, these kind of pulse width modulate and squeeze that waveform within its cycle. As you can see we have still a sine wave but kind of squashed up within that individual pulse and the masking there is making it change sides. If we're just on one side here, or all just modulating the left, it's adding a rest period and squashing up those wave cycles. Now cluster, well within these individual pulses, these individual cycles that we have here at the moment, we'll get more of them. So think of each group here moving as a pulse. And again, formant will squash those together. You can see in here how that's modulating my filter here. And this is where windowing comes in. We can add a shape to this pulse, this small section on each side. This is the window shape. If I slow this down a little bit, maybe had a higher cluster. You can see these now fade in and out, rather than just kind of burst on and off. Changing the window type, these fade up, we ramp up through this cluster. We can ramp down. And you can actually window this completely off. Now going back down to just a neutral state here, we can change the wave shape from signs smoothly and continuously to a rising ramp, triangles, falling ramps, to squares, to kind of noisy folded squares that blend through to a noise. And again, you could add more of these with the cluster and window them. And finally here, and let's just go to modulating the left-hand side, all entirely on this blue trace, we have a wave folder. So we can shape, fold, form and shift those. And hopefully that's been helpful. It was certainly helpful for me to bring this into the sub audio range to understand this masking and how this relates to the left and right outputs and how these individual wave cycles are pulses or pulsarettes. And you can cluster, form and shift, shape and fold them either as an LFO or back up at audio rates. So here I'm using Plume as a single oscillator but dual complex style oscillator set of tones. It's playing against some effects. You can hear that delay trail. 
I remove those and some drums. Let's remove those two. This is the output of Plume, just through a simple VCA in this case, with a 16th note clocked envelope modulating the sound. All my modulation is being attenuated here in maths. Cables match the scope there. And I remove all the modulation. This is the sound of Plume with a Vop Proctive sequence where we can shape continuously and variably. I'm in burst mode, just taking the left output and I'm not shifting or masking at all. Two of these down and been in burst mode, the left out is your standard kind of oscillator output. We have the folder. Which works on a variety of those shapes. We can shift the formant from that simpler sine wave. And windowing through different formants and clusters. You can really get in there and kind of sculpt your sounds. It sounds like a whole modular patch just coming out of the single oscillator. So VCA down, 16th note clocked envelope back in. If I make this short so it's really obvious, you can hear this is just clocked with enveloping in the sound. Some effects back in, drums back in. kind of complete modular patch or at least a dual oscillator, complex oscillator type sound from Plume. But this level modulated really simply in a VCA. I have a Vault Proctive sequence, a quarter note envelope to fold and a 16th note envelope to formant. But what we're focusing on here is the masking and the burst and rest settings for the left and right outputs getting different numbers of pulses and using that like a subharmonic division. Removing my basic free note arpeggio, and my modulators are just been attenuated here. So this is no modulation, no effects in the mixer now either. And I'm just modulating burst and rest. We'll remove those for now. What we have is, just slightly off screen here, the left and right outputs, creating the Lissajou curve, left and right into a stereo filter, and an envelope once per bar, just fading up and down, the filter's cut off. Now this is one to zero, so one cycle always on this side and none on the right side. If we go to one to one. You can hear these subharmonic, suboctive kind of locking see on screen there the number on the left and the number on the right, it's the amount of pulses. And there's no pitch change. Doing this with the filter open. So by modulating these randomly, just once per bar, we're getting different stereo images, different amounts of pulses on each side and different subharmonics in that tone. And if I close my filter again, this modulates and just fades up and down in the filter. Now a 16th note here to the formant, just attenuated here. And this is a nice point to raise that decoupling of pitch and formant here if I hold mask. 
We get the D there showing the decoupling of the formant control, and it's quite a different sound. Add a quarter note envelope to fold. And you can see that there on the scope, it's a triangle wave shape, We're adding a bit of a fold to it. Opening the filter again. Let's couple the formant and the pitch again, holding mask. Again, quite a different sound. My free note arpeggio again to vault proctive. It's a really interesting way to work with sub octaves, sub harmonics, locking with the burst and rest there, a little bit of formant and fold modulation, basic arpeggio. Making that fade in and out with the filter again, effects in the background. So if you've got this far in the video, go drop a hard sync in the comments. What a fascinating thing Plume is and Pulsar Synthesis in general. I'll certainly be playing more of it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Pulsar Synthesis, Plume, which was your favourite patch down below. Head over to patreon.com forward slash divkid to join my community, gain access to exclusives and to support the words I do. Hit like and subscribe, that all helps the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye.